My 34 male life could have been okay growing up, except that my parents wanted to be good people, so they became foster parents. That was noble of them. Those kids needed help. The downside was that I got ignored. I got less attention than those kids because I was independent and didn't need the help. Gifts from my grandparents became gifts for the family. My grandparents stopped that by not buying me gifts but taking me out instead. I got to go see movies and taken out for meals and weekend trips with my grandparents. My dad's folks took me to Disneyland and my mom's mom and dad took me to New York City. My parents tried to get the money for this stuff given to me, them, instead. I begged my grandparents not to do that. I left the house when I was 17. I graduated early and got into a trade. My grandfather was in the union and he got me in. I've been at it for 17 years and I'm doing okay. My parents are not. They ran themselves ragged taking in all those kids. Even the money they got wasn't enough to make up for their sacrifices. They asked me for help and I said no. If I give them money, I know they'll just waste it on the kids they took in after I left. I told them they had a plethora of foster kids that they could ask for money. My mom said she was disappointed in me and thought she'd raise me better. I said I raised myself from about eight years old onward. My grandparents had tapped out too. My parents already owe them a lot of money. My wife says she understands how I feel but thinks I'm being mean. My mom thinks I've held a grudge since childhood. I refuse to speak with my father. But I assume he's still giving my old things to the new kids. They're welcome to spend all their time and money on anything they want. My money is for my family. Am I the idiot for telling my parents to ask their foster children to help instead of me? Not the idiot. Your parents ignored you and tried to take money from you. You're not holding a grudge from childhood. You're simply recognizing a pattern that they never made you a priority. They were irresponsible in their financial planning by taking in so many kids. That's not your problem. Tell your wife I do not think you're being mean. You don't want to be taken advantage of. You're not holding a grudge from childhood. Yes, he is. OP resents his parents for abandoning him. That's a grudge. Slightly, you are the idiot. You, of course, are not at all obligated to give them money, and I would not if I were you. But saying they would waste it on their current foster children is idiotish, in my opinion. It might seem like a waste to you, but it's not to them or the children who can't help their circumstances. Never loan money that you can't afford to completely forfeit. It isn't OP's job to support them and their kindness. I think an honest conversation with the wife is in order. He had already lost a large chunk of his childhood because his parents prioritized the foster kids. Now he's mean for not sacrificing his adulthood too. A question I like to ask myself is, to what end? If they cannot afford to continue fostering, the solution is not to borrow money from you or their parents, but to stop fostering at least until they get their situation under control. P.S. You're not being mean, you're just not being a doormat. Honestly, the fostering is kind of irrelevant to this particular request from them. Giving money to people who are bad with money does nothing to solve their money problems. They will still be crap with their money and will just come back asking for more, as evidenced by how they treated your grandparents and drained their coffers. A quick cash fix will solve zero problems for your parents if they're going to be responsible with it anyway. As my husband likes to say, if they need a loan, they can get one from a financial institution, not us. Good job setting boundaries. They need to grow the heck up and learn how to budget like the rest of the adult world has to. I am 31 male and my girlfriend is 28. She and I have been together for six years and have lived together for the last two. My girlfriend has always enjoyed doing comedy and has done open mic nights since we met shortly after college. She had a real sales job, though that was her Monday through Friday 9 to 5 job where she made decent money. I have a good but hard job and almost triple what my girlfriend made when she had her job. I said had because last August she quit her job because it was taking away from her comedy ventures. She told me that a year from now she thinks she can really make it. I was a bit sceptical, but since I made enough to support us, I encouraged her because I wanted to be a supportive boyfriend. Since she quit her job, she began doing Uber and DoorDash, where she makes 100% of her money. Her comedy has gotten us zero dollars. Over the past few months, I've started to resent her, though. She constantly complains she has no money, yet drives for Uber or DoorDash maybe three times a week for maybe four hours at a time. I've been paying a lot more for household expenses, and I'm not saving as much as I'd like to anymore. She sleeps till noon, because sometimes her open mics run really late, before she even gets to perform. And when she gets up, she just bums around on TikTok and YouTube looking for inspiration. 
She also gets very moody with me if I don't come to 90% of her open mic performances. Even after working a 14-hour day, she'll get mad if I don't go to her open mic at 11pm on a Tuesday. Last night, I did the unthinkable. I asked her to consider going back to a full-time job. I said she should still do her comedy, but I'm struggling with taking care of our expenses all by myself. When she gave a dismissive answer, I told her firmly that she would never be a famous comedian. I said she's 28 and it's time to grow the heck up and join the real world because this is totally unfair to me that I bust my butt while she lives in La La Land and that she can't be this naive at this age by thinking she's going to support herself with this. She stared at me in silence for a few minutes, started crying and went to stay with a friend. She called me a damn idiot and I'm the worst friend ever. She hasn't answered her phone today yet. So, am I a damn idiot? Not the idiot. The reality is people are flawed. You're frustrated taking care of a grown damn adult who is content freeloading off you while she sleeps till noon and barely works part-time. So your anger boiled over and you said some harsh things. If she wants to be a comedian, she can work a full-time job and make her dream a side gig, just like she would have to do if she had to pay her own big girl bills. It's been almost a year. Time to grow up and pay the bills. For me, it's not even an ultimatum. My partner would have to get a job that pays bills and half the rent or we would be done. Boy, oh boy, is she going to turn that argument into some serious comedic gold. You, my friend, are going to be skewered. I think you are the idiot just because you don't crush somebody's dreams. Comedy is hard and most people suck at the very beginning and only get better the more they do it. You should have walked away instead of attacking her choice of career. You are the idiot. I hope she keeps at it. Would you mind supporting me too? I want to be a comedian and you can send me money. Thanks a lot, my guy. Stick it to the man. I'm shocked. She does need to grow the heck up. It's not fair to expect you to carry her. She's not a child. Grown women carry families on their backs all the time. Her feelings, time and dreams aren't more important than yours. The cynical part of me wonders why the responses are so different from the occasional I finally snapped and told my boyfriend he'll never be a famous streamer and he needs to get a job threads we get. If she doesn't want another job, she needs to work out how to get paid for this. If she currently makes zero dollars doing it, that doesn't sound like she'll make a career out of it. My husband and I have an infant daughter. She's breastfed. She currently has four teeth coming in at once. She's been biting the absolute heck out of me when nursing at least three or four times a day. A few days ago, she made me bleed. My husband thinks it's hilarious despite seeing me in absolute excruciating pain. When I get angry and stop a nursing session and walk off, he says things like, she's just a baby, using baby talk and following me with the baby, and says things like, oh no, is mama mad at the poor baby? It's not the poor baby's fault, is it, sweetie? Every single time I walk away. Usually follows it up with, oh, how can mama be mad at you? Who can be mad at that face? And for clarification, I'm not angry at my daughter. She is a baby and she's teething. But he is a grown damn man who finds his wife's extreme pain to be hilarious. This has been going on for nearly a month. She cut two teeth prior to this and the same thing happened. Every single time she bites me, he starts laughing. Not just a chuckle, straight up knee slap laughing. I've told him many times to stop laughing because she latches on harder whenever he does. She now thinks it's a game. He keeps saying he'll stop and that he's sorry, but it's just so funny. It's caused fights, because there's literally nothing funny about me being in this much physical pain, and I think he's messed up in the head to find it funny. And no, he isn't like this regarding anything else. He really just thinks that everything our daughter does is cute or funny. So this morning, we're lying in bed. I co-sleep, bassinet that hooks to the bed. She bit me hard. Nothing I did stopped it. I pulled her face into my breast to get her to unlatch, but it didn't work. I hooked my finger in her mouth to try and get her to unlatch. She bit down harder. I even flicked her cheek, obviously not hard, hoping it would startle her and make her let go. Nope, she starts smiling instead. Why? Because my husband is sitting in bed. Hyena is laughing while watching me struggle with tears in my eyes. She finally pulled back, while still biting, and pulled back enough to make her unlatch. It damn hurt! He's still laughing, and I don't know what came over me, but I reached over and I pinched hold of his nipple as hard as I possibly could, and I squeezed, and I refused to let go until he physically slapped my hand away. Through gritted teeth, I said, I told you to stop laughing when she does that. Do it again, I'm going to rip your goddamn nipple off. 
He's now calling me a damn psycho and says that he can't trust being around me for his own safety, but I'm apparently abusive. Nope, baby has absolutely learned this is a game by dad's reaction. When my babies bit me while feeding, I involuntarily jumped and yelped, Ow! They each only did it two or three times before they stopped because they didn't get any positive reinforcement of the behavior. Your idiot hubby is teaching your child to bite you. If I were you, I'd refuse to nurse him in the same room. He's effectively causing you harm and he's sabotaging your breastfeeding relationship with your child. Not teaching. He has taught the child to do this. He should be so very ashamed. I'm petty and would be carrying clamps to get him when he laughs at my pain. Screw him, to be honest. That's real idiot behavior. My firstborn had a deep latch and it made breastfeeding excruciating. Period. My husband never laughed. He'd rub my back, bring me a drink, take the baby, or do anything to help me. This is divorceable to me. How someone treats you while you're pregnant and in the postpartum period is telling and worthy of reaction. My wife, 34, and I, 34 male, have been married for eight years and we have a kindergarten age son. Over the past few months, my wife and I have occasionally been having arguments on finances. The main argument we've been having is that I want to take our family out on a vacation to a different state, but my wife wants to save up so we can travel abroad next year. Last month, my wife and I were arguing again about this, and I was telling her a vacation would be really good for our family and son. We talked back and forth, and I could sense my wife was getting exasperated, but I stood my ground. I told her we could take a vacation now, and we could also go abroad next year. And my wife just lost her cool and said that the finances made that impractical, and that she also wished I was better in bed. But in life, we don't always get what we want. That stung me. I'm aware I'm average, but I've never had any complaints from anybody about it until now, and hearing it from my wife just numbed me. I then checked out the conversation, and my wife instantly apologized after she said that. I told her it was okay, and then I went to sleep. However, from the next day on, I distanced myself from my wife and focused on work and my son. My wife tried to initiate conversation and apologized multiple times, and I usually ignored her or told her to let it go. I also started eating out as I didn't want to eat my wife's dinner. My wife initiated intimacy one night, and I told her to get off me. My birthday was a few days ago, and I ignored my wife when she wished me or when she tried to kiss me. We didn't do anything for my birthday, and when my wife gave me a gift that was packaged with also a handwritten letter, I told her to return it. I have no idea what the gift was or what was written in the letter, and I don't really care. I'm at my limit now, and I know this isn't healthy or sustainable, so I've seriously started considering divorce. But I also wanted to get an opinion from the people I trusted most in the world, my two siblings. My brother thinks I should at least consider marriage counselling first before proceeding with divorce, as he doesn't think this is worth jumping straight to divorce for. My sister has the opposite opinion, and she thinks I'm still young and fit and have a long life ahead of me, and it should be very easy for me to get someone who's much more beautiful than my wife, both on the exterior and the interior. Am I the idiot for checking out of my relationship and considering divorce? Dude, the comment itself is an idiot move, but in my opinion, the bigger problem is that she said it in anger, which means she intended it as a weapon to hurt you. Anyone who would do that isn't someone you can feel safe being vulnerable around. If you want to try to stay, then marriage counselling is mandatory, as is individual counselling for her to figure out why her mind even went there in the first place. Any refusal from her on that should be an immediate game over. That said, nothing in your post indicates that you do want to stay, just that you think maybe you should. If you don't really want to stay with her, don't. Thank you for pointing this out. Words can't be taken back once said out loud. People always need to remember that, even in the most heated argument. Also, you don't say things you never thought about before. They don't really pop up out of nowhere in a completely unrelated fight. The tree remembers what the axe forgets. Am I taking crazy pills? You all think someone saying something hurtful in anger once is worth getting divorced over? You all have some of the most fragile egos I've ever seen. It was an ugly thing to do. She was angry and she went straight for the jugular. If that's all that happened, I feel bad for the guy. But then, instead of telling his wife how he feels about it, he shuts down completely and pouts about it for days. What a baby. I'm sorry that your wife hurt your feelings one time. That sucks, but it's not worth dissolving your relationship over. Use your words like a big boy and tell her how you feel. Jeez. My brother and I share a car. It's not all his fault, but the car isn't clean in the slightest, more by him than me. 
It isn't that disgusting, but the seats are old and sort of stained and we have our backpacks and schoolwork scattered in the back. One of our chores is taking our stepsister to softball practice. Usually my brother does it because I'm at practice for my sports when hers start, but I had an off day while my brother was taking a nap, so I had to take her. My stepdad said I could take his car if I wanted to, but I wanted to drive mine. When I pulled it up, my stepsister refused to get in because it was so dirty. I told her to get over it, but she kept refusing, and I guess my brother has been taking our dad's car whenever he takes her to practice. She kept annoying me about how gross the car was and refusing to get in, and I just had enough. This is where I might be the idiot. I told her to ask her dad for a ride and drove off because I had places to be too. About five minutes later, my dad called me and was angry, saying I was too old to be acting this way and that I should have just taken his car. I told him the car wasn't bad and she was overreacting, but he didn't want to hear it and wasn't happy. I'm just confused by this whole mess and wondering what others think. Am I the idiot? If your car is actually a biohazard and you're too much of a teenage male who doesn't comprehend how gross he is to realize it, then you're the idiot. If your stepsister is just a pretentious teenage girl who thinks she deserves to be driven around in style and doesn't want to be seen in an embarrassing but otherwise acceptable car, then you're not the idiot. We need info to decide. How old is your stepsister? Can you describe the state of the car? Did it smell bad or could it have stained her clothes? She's a young teen just entering high school and the car isn't that clean but nothing that would stain clothes and a little smell but the windows were going to stay down. My brother refuses to clean it at all and thinks it's not bad in the slightest. I'm not deep cleaning a car, that's more his fault by myself. Would have kept the windows down. What? That's not her being pretentious, that's the boys being gross. If the car smells and you have to put the window down, that's disgusting. I think you're old enough to clean your damn car. You're both incredibly immature. Act your age and clean the damn car. You both drive it, you both clean it. You are the idiot and so is your brother. I don't know a polite way to say this, so I'm going to have to be blunt, honey. That car belongs to two teenage boys. It's summertime. Teenage boys typically smell and spray deodorants don't help. If the stink is noticeable to you, I guarantee you that it will curl the average person's nose, especially a teenage girl. Clean your car and just in case one of you doesn't do this, shower daily and don't think that spray deodorant will help you avoid that. It doesn't. This goes for any other young men reading this.